Hey guys, it's Matt Pittman. Welcome to the 40th episode of Traeger Kitchen Live. Uh, you're here in our outdoor kitchen in Waxahachie, Texas. It's a beautiful day today. It was like 76 degrees, so I'm certainly not complaining as we all get prepared uh, for a Super Bowl meal for Super Bowl in Tampa Bay, so comparable weather. Um, anyway, I'm super excited about today. We've got three big items planned for you guys. Um, I've done six or seven of these Traeger Kitchen Lives myself, and uh, you know, when I did the very first one, I, I came out and said it was a, a good way uh, for me to share my passion for outdoor cooking. Um, I teach barbecue all the time, and during the pandemic, it's been difficult to do that, but uh, thank you to our friends at Traeger that put this together uh, to allow us to come into your home tonight and hopefully get you guys uh, Super Bowl ready. So um, anyway, and you might just be eating by yourself. You might be having you know, uh, uh, your family over, whatever the case may be. Um, but nonetheless, we're going to prepare you with three items today that are uh, sure to wow your guests for sure. So a little bit about me. Uh, I'm the CEO and founder of Meat Church. We're a barbecue brand uh, located here in Waxahachie, Texas. We've been around since about 2014. Um, if you're a Traeger user, you're probably familiar with Meat Church. We do quite a bit uh, together. I'm a Traeger pro, um, create a lot of recipes, and just do a lot of collaborative stuff with Traeger. Uh, and we certainly appreciate everybody in the Traeger hood using Meat Church. And so we're going to use some of our products today. I'll talk to you about those. Uh, we're primarily known for our barbecue rubs, but you know, right now we've probably got 150 SKUs on MeatChurch.com with all sorts of cool uh, barbecue lifestyle merchandise and stuff like that. But Anyway, uh, the Traeger family allows me to, again, share my passion for you guys and recipes that I develop and, and like to share with you guys. Um, but I'll tell you, you know, my style is really to show you what I consider a very straightforward or simplistic way to make amazing food for your family and friends. We call it Meat Church because it's about bringing people together uh, to create great food um, while creating, you know, great and lasting memories. So that's, that's what it's all about. And I often say the ways that I'm going to show you isn't the only way you can do it. Um, you know, I'll challenge you as we go through the recipes to kind of make these recipes your own. There's a lot of latitude in how you cook this stuff. There's certainly a lot of latitude in the flavor profiles. If you don't like something that I'm doing, then you know, feel free to tweak it to your liking. Um, I'll talk a lot about pulling your head out of the recipe and really looking at the visual cues of the food that you're preparing. Um, we'll go over that with each of the recipes um, that we're cooking today. Um, all of these recipes can be found on TraegerGrills.com. I personally use the Traeger app, which is the greatest app in the history of apps on my iPhone. Um, you know, you can, you can watch today's episode there. You can click and view all these recipes, get step-by-step -step instructions, send them to your grill. Uh, it's super easy. And, you know, shout out to the Traeger culinary team um, who will take our creations, recreate them at headquarters, shoot photographs of them, and just do a killer job. Nicole's team is amazing at representing um, our recipes and show them to you, to you guys in ways that are just honestly easy to digest and replicate and do at home. Um, all of my recipes are always on meatchurch.com. We put a lot of Super Bowl content out this week and dropped two new videos on our YouTube channel the past two days, so you can check those out if you need additional ideas um, for things to cook. But speaking of the Super Bowl, um, lots of great stuff coming from Traeger this weekend that's super exciting. So this weekend is going to be the last um, episode or the last time you can enter Traeger game day. So if you're not familiar with that, take your creations and post them on Instagram using the hashtag Traeger game day on Sunday. And I would do it early. I would do it early and often, to be honest with you. There are super cool prizes and I'm not just blowing smoke, uh, so to speak. Um, you can win really cool magnets that you can't buy anywhere else. I always see them on folks, hoppers and things. And people are like, where'd you get that? Well, this is how you get it. Um, you can get, you know, uh, a Traeger flag. Um, probably the thing I'm most excited about is Traeger has developed basically Super Bowl rings. So you ever get on an airplane and you look over and somebody's wearing like the 10 pound gaudy ring and you're spinning the whole flight like going, who is that? Who's that guy? And you're taking the awkward selfie and you're texting your buddies when you land, like, who am I sitting next to? Well, just imagine, I mean, I know I look like a football player, but if I get on a plane with that ring, everybody's gonna be like, dude, he must be the kicker. Um, so anyway, there's a bunch of those coming Sunday. I'm going to try my best to post photos in hopes of getting one of those. Um, leave it to Traeger to create the coolest, most fun prizes ever. Enough about that. It's time to cook. Um, so it's 5 p.m. Central here. As this episode goes on, it'll start to get dark, but we've got lots of lights here, so we should be good to go. So what are we going to cover today? 
Uh, we're going to start out making sweet Thai chili wings, which are honestly one of my favorite things to make at tailgates. Um, then we're going to get into shrimp brochettes. There's a lot of history behind that uh, as it relates to the Super Bowl and a party that I attended most of my life since college that I'll tell you about. And then we're going to finish up uh, with, with spare ribs. So I grew up in the South. I grew up on pork, uh, pulled pork and ribs. I moved to Texas as a teenager. And if you know Texas barbecue, we're all about beef now, but growing up on pork, there's something special about it. Uh, and I'm excited to share with you some amazing Snake River Farms ribs today that I think you guys are gonna love. And they're gonna be really easy to prepare. Um, but we've got a lot, honestly, to cover for an hour. We've pre-cooked a little bit, but we're also gonna cook everything we're talking about with you guys, with, you know, the, with the exception of the ribs, which are just gonna sauce at the end because uh, ribs for me are generally about a five hour cook and we can't get that done in an hour. But everything else, uh, we're gonna actually cook in the class and then bring in some that we have cooked this afternoon and we'll kind of pull it out, out at the end. And be sure to ask questions in the comments below, whether you're on Facebook or you're on YouTube. Fire away questions. Um, I have someone here that's going to take the questions and read them to me. So uh, try to keep them in order for what we're doing, uh, and we'll try to answer as many as we can. And if there's something I don't answer today live, I will go back on the posts. Uh, these posts live on those platforms, you know, I guess forever. And so I'll go back and try to catch other questions, and I'll personally answer those for you guys um, tonight, tomorrow, things like that, or whenever you might watch this episode. So, okay. Let's get going. First rule of barbecue in Texas goes without saying. Can't make barbecue without having a beer. All right, let's get going on chicken wings. The reason I love making chicken wings. So I've season tickets with the Cowboys for 20 years. And if you know the Cowboys, you know that it's more about the tailgating than the football lately because the football doesn't end up being a good story. No offense to my cowboy friends. Uh, but anyway, with chicken wings, what we're going to show you, you can actually season wings one way, cook them, and then at the end, you can take them a lot of different directions. So while we're doing sweet Thai chili wings today, I'm going to season these and cook these. And when I pull them off before I sauce them, I could actually apply several different sauces and have different flavor profiles to appease a crowd. I'm telling you, this is number one in my book. Whether you're cooking at home, tailgating, whatever the case is, you can have sweet Thai chili lemon pepper, hot buffalo wings, dry, whatever you want. So today, again, we're doing sweet Thai chili, uh, and this is a massive crowd favorite. It's not hot. If you're not familiar with sweet Thai chili, it's just as it sounds. It's actually sweet with a lot of flavor in it, and it's not hot. So, uh, you know, it's, it's really good for a lot of folks. We're going to start out today with a whole wing, and I'm going to show you how um, we actually cut these just to break them apart. So when you cook wings, you can either cook the drum, you can cook the flapper, you can cook the whole thing. Um, I'm actually a flapper guy because I like to remove all the meat off the bone when I eat it, it's just easier. Uh, even though when I eat chicken or like fried chicken, I love legs, drums. Um, so anyway, if you have a whole wing like this, you know, we like to go in and just separate them. This is a sharp boning knife. You can leave the wing tip on or not. Um, I don't normally eat the tip, but I have a lot of buddies that do. Uh, when I don't prepare these, I have a lot of friends that ask me like, hey, can you, can you cook these for me? So that's, it's up to you. So drum, flapper, we're just going to separate a few, again, so that we make sure that we've got enough time um, to get these completely cooked. And, and what you're doing, you know, you want a really sharp knife, but when you, when you take this knife down in this joint, you can just really naturally feel uh, where it need, where the knife needs to go without really any effort. So this isn't like I'm doing anything, um, you know, anything magical or anything like that. And today we're going to season these uh, with a particular seasoning. And with Meat Church, we've got actually quite a few options for how you could season those wings. And I'll go over that as we uh, as I pick a pick a seasoning here in just a second. All right, so that's enough for, oh, one more. Honestly, this is the cheapest way to buy chicken wings, so if you don't mind taking this little extra step, just a way to save a little bit of money. So we got our drums, got our flappers, and our scratchers. All right, I'm doing my raw prep on this block here. Um, I'm gonna get asked, 
This bottom block, which you'll see in a minute, is a rosewood block. It's a butcher block I use everywhere, and this is a topper that I do my raw prep on. It could act as a butcher block as well. After we do this raw prep, we're going to get rid of it. You always want to keep a clean hand when you're seasoning. Lots of options in our arsenal. Holy Gospel. Uh, let's just let's go this way. Gospel is our all-purpose rub. This is a great choice. The Holy Gospel has a little more pepper than that. This is probably my favorite if I want to take the wing multiple directions. But my absolute favorite chicken wing is a heavy dose of our Holy Voodoo. So today, we're going to go with the Holy Gospel. Um, and just so I can explain this a little further, I'm going to start seasoning these. Season, I've got, I, I went with a clean hand so I can grab the bottle. You don't want to take a glove that's had raw chicken on it. I'm you know, pretty particular about cross-contamination. You want to be careful with it. And I'm going to season these pretty liberally. So the good thing about this Holy Gospel seasoning is, like I said, I can take this many different directions. Uh, this is great if you just want to smoke wings. This is all a very good base if you want to do what I said in the beginning, which is we're going to cook these and then sauce them a certain way. I could take this down the path of a buffalo wing, you know, sweet Thai chili, obviously, um, straight barbecue sauce, you know, whatever you're wanting to do. So this is, when, when we're going to Cowboys games, I'll normally go to Costco and buy a 10-pound bag of frozen wings, and I'll season them all with this and uh, just take them usually three different directions in the parking lot. All right, I would love to let this seasoning sit for about 15 minutes total, but I don't want you to sit there for 15 minutes, so we're going to keep seasoning. Normally, I season about 18 inches high to get a real even, real liberal application, uh, but it's a little bit windy today. There's a, there's a front coming in, so I'm, if you can tell, I'm kind of playing the slice here. But, you know, get them dirty. No biggie. You can do this in a bowl, too, and toss them in a bowl. I'm going to do the scratchers while I'm at it. Okay. Big tip, I love to use a baking rack, cooling grid, whatever you want to call it. Uh, when we, we cooked a bunch earlier on larger, on larger racks, this is a little bit smaller because I wasn't going to be doing that many. Anytime I'm doing small items in the grill, I will often use these stainless racks. I get these on Amazon, whether I'm doing pig shots, pork belly burn-ins, wings. This allows you to open your grill one time in, one time out, uh, and not have to leave the grill open and put you know 97 chicken wings on it. So. We're just going to throw these on here. Guys, fire away questions. I don't know if we've already got any that we... First and foremost, who you got on Sunday? Man, first question is going to be the toughest of the day. Who do I have on Sunday? I've been thinking about this all week. Um, we have a number of Meat Church customers that play on both teams. And that makes it really tough for me and a couple of them have been commenting on our photos on Instagram this week so that makes it even more hard for me um, by the way we delivered a Traeger Timberline to Patrick Mahomes house right before training camp so that's you know my heart's really there um, also just sent Mitchell Schwartz lineman Kansas City some rub but there's a great story out of Tampa Bay Ted Larson played in the league for a long time sat at home in Arizona working his butt off all year and got picked up by the Bucks late in the year He's playing, um, their center's also a customer, and it's tough to root, root against Tom Brady. I'm not a Patriots fan, but when he went to the Bucks and they're doing well, that's hard to see. So I'm just happy, so I'm an Alabama boy, so I've already got my championship. The good thing about this is I don't care who wins. Um, it's a win-win for us either way, and I think it's gonna be, I think it's hard to root against Patrick Mahomes and team, Texas boy, but I'll be a winner either way. We're cooking today on the Timberline 1300. Uh, we're cooking with pecan pellets. You've got a lot of variability in what kind of pellets you use. Um, let me come back to that so I can put these on real quick. So that grill's running at 500 degrees, like I said. This is going to be a very easy cook. You can get these wings cooked in 20 minutes on the, you know, running that hot. If you don't have a Timberline, uh, other grills go to 450, that's fine. You can run 450. It's 20-ish minutes to cook. Um, so let's start with the pellets. I'm going with pecan today. That's a little lighter smoke. Um, other great choices would be hickory, which is a little more smoke. Uh, mesquite, a little sm more smoke than that. Very Texas flavor. Um, oak that is 
traditional Texas smoke wood, very good. The signature blend is very good. If you want lighter smoke in anything you do, like maybe your spouse, like, oh, I don't like it too smoky. Um, well, first off, these aren't gonna get real smoky because they're only in there for 20 minutes. So when I go to a cook, I think if I want more smoke and it's only in 20 minutes, then I'm gonna go a heavier smoke pellet. If you really are trying to lighten the smoke, then go with lighter things like alder, maple, or your fruit woods, uh, which I don't, I rarely use those types of things. I, I want the smoke. So um, anyway, we went with pecan today. Pecan's a great all purpose. Um, if you only ever go buy like one or two types of pellets, pecan and hickory are the middle of the road ones that'll never do you wrong. Nothing you cook will, you know, taste odd. Um, wood or pellets are an ingredient in your cook. So the pairing of it is very, very important to me. Um, but Traeger's run such clean fires. I mean, this thing's rocking at 500 degrees and you see no smoke at all coming out of the grill. I often get comments from non-Traeger owners to say, that's not smoking, what's going on? That's actually perfect. Um, the best smoke is thin blue smoke that you can't see. If you ever go to a barbecue joint and you see a stack smoking like a locomotive, you will actually taste that in the barbecue and you don't want that. You don't want that thick billowy smoke. So. Um, you know, the patented downdraft system in this grill is amazing and you can't beat the Timberline. So anyway, we're going to let those go for 20 minutes. By the way, I want to mention this. We're going to jump into shrimp in just a minute. We're going to get to cooking that and then I'm going to have to come back and sauce these. So I, forgive me for bouncing around a little bit, but once these are where they need to be, we're going to sauce them and put them back on for five minutes or so. Um, we're looking for, you know, chicken has to get to 165 to be done, but a big tip. With chicken wings, you need to go beyond 165. I constantly get asked, how do I make them more crispy? You need to dry the chicken off, which we had dried that chicken off before we seasoned it. Um, you can leave it open on a rack in your refrigerator for several hours or overnight to help dry it out. Um, and cooking at a very high temperature, like 500, that will help you. We're not frying chicken. It's not gonna be that extreme crispiness, but those tips will help you get the crispiest chicken um, that you can get. So you wanna take these to more like 185, 190, you're not gonna dry them out, trust me. Um, I, when I first saw that you could cook a chicken wing to 190, I was like, that's overdone, why would anybody say that? And that was years ago. Uh, you need to go to those temperatures to really get it where you want it to be. Yeah, the question is, do I ever use baking powder or cornstarch uh, with my rubs? So the, the cornstarch trick is a, is, a, is a good trick where people will apply cornstarch um, to the chicken before the seasoning. Um, I've done it. I don't do it on a regular basis, but that's a super popular way to help crisp up your chicken as well. What's your favorite meat rub for wings? For wings? My favorite meat church rub for wings is definitely Voodoo. Holy Voodoo was kind of all purposely with a Cajun influence, has a slight jalapeno kick. Um, I can't eat super hot stuff and I love this, so don't be worried about the bite. It won't work with certain flavor profiles, but like, you know, this just as a smoked wing, it can't be beat. Just on chicken in general, I have yet to find a rub just in the world that I like better than this. So that's my favorite. Um, but, you know, what we went with, Holy Gospel, obviously very good. Another one that is quite good is Honey Hog Hot. It's about 10% dried jalapeno in it, super good. If you want something for your kids, it's really good. Um, my son that's eight eats this straight, like, like literally straight, puts it on popcorn, it's great on wings. So when I'm trying to get my little kids who eat like two things ever, um, like just like spaghetti and pizza, I put honey hog on meat, so that's really good uh, for your family. So the question is, do outside temperatures affect smoking? So obviously we're in the dead of winter in a lot of, you know, in winter here in the States. Um, the weather's good here today, but it's gonna be in the 20s next week. So how does it affect you on a Traeger? I mean, the whole deal is the colder it is outside, the more fuel the Traeger has to burn to maintain those temperatures. But honestly, Traegers are very efficient and great at holding temp. A lot of other I'll just say lower brand pellet grills that compete with Traeger aren't as good as efficient and their temperatures are all over the place. But the D2 models um, with, you know, with the technology in there, these things, I mean, you know, it was cold here recently and it, every time I came out and looked at the temperature, it was within, you know, a couple degrees of where I was trying to be. If you're in an extremely cold part of the country, some people put, um, you know, the blankets on top of their grills. Luckily, we don't have to do that here in Texas, but all the cold weather does is just 
burn more pellets, generally. Yeah, the question is, if you don't have super smoke on your grill, could you go lower temperature and get the same smokiness? That's exactly the trick. Um, you don't have to have super smoke. In anything you cook, um, you know, I told you I would talk about pulling your head out of the recipe. The lower you cook it, the more smoke you're going to apply on it. With chicken, the more rubbery it's going to be, so you've got to think about that as you finish the cook. Do you jack up the heat on a grill? Do you end up flash frying something at the end or you know whatever depending on where you're trying to go with it but yeah if you don't have super smoke it's fine to just go lower you know these wings um, certainly we're not running super smoke that's 225 that's an option that's available at 225 degrees or below and we're at 500 right now do I recommend brining wings yeah I didn't do that today um, because we're, we're running these really hot and I don't think generally you need to I brine a lot of things and we even sell a brine and I'm not you know, to prove to you, I don't think you have to do it. I didn't even bring it up. So, you know, I brine my turkeys at Thanksgiving when it's a really huge piece of meat that you don't want to dry out. But there's, you know, such little meat on a wing. I know people that do it. I don't think it's necessary, but you could dry brine or wet brine. Absolutely. If you've got the time, I'll tell you one thing I do love to do is take my raw wings and I have, you know, again, Costco boxes of Ziploc bags. I drop those wings in Ziploc bags and pour marinade in them, throw them in my fridge overnight. So, especially for football, I love taking buffalo sauce, pouring in a Ziploc bag, closing it up, putting that in the fridge. When you go to cook that, you have imparted serious buffalo flavor in it versus just, you know, coating the outside in it. You go to Wingstop, they cook your wings, they toss it and whatever. That's kind of what we're doing today. But if you marinate something in a flavor profile, you're, it's really, really going to change the flavor. So that may be something you want to do. Okay, we're going to jump into shrimp uh, while these wings are rocking. By the way, one more thing. Um, you don't have to flip these wings, but I'll tell you, I'm going to flip them at one point. Um, I like to get char kind of on all sides. Cooking the wings directly on the metal grates would give us more char than the little grate I put in there. But uh, anyway, um, I would recommend flipping them a time or two during the 20 minutes. Again, you don't have to, but um, I probably will. So I'll probably stop after we put the shrimp on and uh, depending where we're at and see how they're looking and I might flip them. Um, you know. No matter when I'm grilling wings, I usually try to flip them. So, okay, let me grab some gloves and we'll do shrimp. You guys, want to hear a funny joke? Um, we're talking Super Bowl and we got a Cowboys helmet and shot. That's been a while. That was funny. Haha. -ha. All right, we've got some pretty big shrimp here um, that we're going to make probably my historic most favorite Super Bowl appetizer. These are big enough to be called a meal, to be honest with you, and I'll tell you about them. When I got out of college, my buddy Dave Jimenez that I was, uh, I'm, I'm a fight out with, Dave made these at his Super Bowl party when we had no money. We were all right out of college, and he went and spent a ton of money on a bunch of shrimp, and... Uh, you know, we walked in this house and he had this huge tray of these shrimp brochettes he made. And I just remember eating one and then I just kept eating them and kept eating them. The guys are outside drinking beer and here I am just keep eating all this shrimp. And I was like, this is the greatest thing ever. And so anyway, uh, he held that party for a number of years. We ate this every year. And then he also has um, season tickets with me to the Cowboys now. And so we make this at game. So it's, you know, nostalgic for me, but just honestly, uh, super good. And it's pretty hardy. You can make it anytime. Very easy to make. You're going to see how easy we put this together, how quick it cooks. Um, and they're going to be great. So we've put a bunch together to start out the day, um, to start out the cook, so that you don't have to watch me put all these together. But the ingredients are very simple. You know, really big shrimp that we have peeled, deveined, and slightly sliced open. I'm going to have to grab a different knife. All right, uh, let me go over the ingredients real quick. Um, what we've got are obviously the shrimp. Uh, we've got fresh jalapenos that we just cut little slivers of. And then we've got a sliver of Monterey Jack cheese. So you can you know, use whatever cheese you like. And obviously uh, bacon here, I forgot to mention that. So we've peeled these, we've deveined them, 
And what we've done on most of these, I left one to show you, is I'm going to take this chef knife very carefully here, and I'm just going to kind of fillet this open, just to split it open a little bit more. To get it nice and split open so that we have something to, um, to actually hold these two pieces in. So we're going to put the jalapeno, actually I'll put the cheese in first. Throw the jalapeno in there. And then we're going to wrap it in some bacon. This is standard bacon. This is not thick cut. Um, I love thick cut bacon, but when I'm grilling something like this, and I'm going to toothpick it by the way, a lot of things I do I don't toothpick, but this, you need it to stay together, so we're going to toothpick that. Um, thick cut bacon when you're grilling it takes longer to to fully cook and uh, and longer to crisp up so I usually go with a standard cut to give yourself a shot at it um, you know being more more crispy and more done before this shrimp is going to cook really quick and so I don't want this shrimp to turn into complete rubber uh, if I had thick cut bacon it probably would be pretty rubbery by the time the bacon was done we're just wrapping it around nice and tight I'm gonna come back up to the middle with it and then toothpick it. So when I make um, jalapeno poppers, and you guys have seen that, we've got, a, we've got video on the Meat Church YouTube with that. We don't toothpick it because the bacon, the bacon will usually hold, and there you go, you can see that really good. Just tuck it in there. But on these, um, this stuff in the middle can come out fairly easily, so we're gonna, that's why we're using the toothpick here. Obviously don't forget to take toothpick out at the end or you're gonna have pretty bad bite. Want to ask me any questions why I get these ready? What model Traeger do I recommend? Great question. So we're fortunate enough to run a Pro, an Ironwood, and a Timberline. And we try to, honestly, I'll, I'll be totally, totally honest. We rotate our cooks around a lot. In fact, just to tell you the honest to God truth, right here in this kitchen, right here, you can't see, like right within my line of sight, I have obviously the Timberline, I have a Pro 780 right in front of it, and you guys see the Ranger right here. Um, the last time I used this particular Timberline in my outdoor kitchen was actually in the November episode of Traeger Kitchen Live. Um, I've been cooking on my Pro ever since then, so that, you know, that go and that's the truth. So that goes to show you Pro makes amazing food. Uh, there's a couple of people at Traeger that are probably laughing right now because, little known fact, I left my last dish in this 1300, and when we came to clean it this week, we found it. And I think I can still smell it. But anyway, the bad thing was that dish was prepared in a Griswold vintage skillet from 1930-ish, and I wasn't letting that bad boy go, so I basically spent all night worrying about my baby cleaning up that skillet. But anyway, back to the question. Uh, we have a barbecue supply shop in Waxahachie, and when people come in and ask us which Traeger, it, the Ironwood, you know, middle of the road. So from price perspective, you got Pro, then the Ironwood, then the Timberline. This Timberline's a beast, a tank. I've literally never had one issue with it. With that said, there's nothing wrong with the Timberline or the Pro for that matter. The Timberline, I think, is really the best bang for your buck. If your budget can afford it, I would go Ironwood. Um, you know, but honestly, the main thing for me, make sure you get a D2 model. If you've got a historic model, they're great, been around forever, but I think there's a really big difference in the D2 models um, with the independent air and pellet capability. Um, these things are just dead on. I've got this one set at 500 and it's running 497 right now. Love it. What size shrimp? What were these, U10s? Yeah, I think they are U10s. I didn't actually grocery shop these, so I have a friend here that's a better grocery shopper than me who provided us with the shrimp today. I mean, look at this amazing spread we've got here, complete with brie. We've got, you guys know I'm not eating any of this, like this is meat church, so we'll have to talk about that from a food styling perspective next time. But it is pretty for camera. All right, let's season these. Um, okay, so. We're supposed to season these with the gospel all purpose, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shift gears on you. That's what the recipe says, but, dude, it's tough to beat voodoo on shrimp. And we already got holy gospel on something, so we're going holy voodoo. Lots of options. Any of our honey rubs, our gospel, our holy gospel, our holy voodoo, all would be great. 
I'm going to season these on both sides. So here, the wind's not blowing. Now you can see my 18 to 24 inch application. I'm just going to pat these just a little because I'm going to flip them over and um, get going. I don't want you guys to have to wait. So ask me some questions while I season these. And then I'm going to put these on the Ranger that I've got set at 425 degrees with pecan pellets for a pretty quick grill. Do you soak the toothpicks first? Do I soak the toothpicks first? I might have, but I didn't have time today, so I didn't. Um, they're going to be on here pretty quick, but here's the thing with the Traeger. They cook indirect. There's no direct fire hitting these. If you were cooking on an open fire, uh, like if you're on a cedar plank or with toothpicks, there'd be a lot more risk of these things catching on fire. But in a Traeger running indirect, um, it's, it's a lot more simple. One of the reasons I love it, and I don't think you need to. If I could only pick one wood pellet type to cook with, what would it be? It would be hickory. Um, I grew up on hickory. Uh, my granddaddy's farm in Alabama is covered in hickory, so it's just something we had. It pairs nicely with pork, but I feel like it's the best all-purpose out there. Uh, so that's kind of what I like. It gives me a fair amount of smoke, um, great flavor. I can use it on anything, so hickory is my favorite. What model do I take tailgating? Great question. Um, we always take the Ranger, um, but for bigger groups, sometimes we take the tailgater a little bit bigger, but I love just carrying the Pro. The Pro's the lightest. Um, you, so my truck's kind of tall, shocker in Texas, and so loading up a Timberline isn't real fun, and I'm afraid if it falls out, it's like a lot of money. So I love taking the Pro because it's easy. I'm going to check in on these wings um, while these are... These are just kind of adhering for just a quick second. Same thing as I said with the wings, I'd love to let it sit about 15 minutes. Um, when the seasoning is adhering to your meat, no matter what you're cooking, what's happening, um, it, you know, if we came back in 10 minutes, these shrimp would look really wet. Uh, the seasoning is pulling the moisture out of the meat. But the point of that for me is that it's just really adhered and on there. Um, you're applying a seasoning to an appetizer. You don't need to do this the night before or anything like that. However, the great thing about this I always stress prepping when I talk tailgating and then football in general. So now, you know, not a lot of tailgating going on. You're doing this at home. Y'all do this on Saturday. Do all this prep on Saturday. Wrap it up and put it in your fridge. Enjoy Sunday. It's no different than uh, Thanksgiving or Christmas. Do your prep the day before. Crack open a beer and do this prep so that you can just enjoy the cook on Sunday. Sunday, it could just be about having a cold beer cooking your food, watching the last football game of the year, because we're all going to be sad come Monday unless you win those awesome Traeger prizes. Uh, we're going to realize there's no football, and we're going to be forced to watch basketball or hockey. Let's check in on the wings real quick. Woo! I'm going to flip a couple over. The ones on the edge out here are a little hot. That's okay. pull the little scratchers off. They're pretty crispy. Leave the rest of those wings. They're already looking really good. Very key point, you gotta get yourself an instant read thermometer no matter what you're cooking. This is how you nail the desired doneness of anything you cook. This is a Thermapen MK4. Um, limited edition multicolor, so I know when people steal my stuff. But this is how you determine the uh, desired doneness, and we'll check the temperature here in just a few minutes, because they're getting pretty close to being done. But with all that said, it's time to put these shrimp on. And I'm not trying to be crazy about gloves, like, hey, gloves are like super scarce during the pandemic, so I gotta ration these, but just to keep myself clean, I, I don't mind handling this bacon, but just because I'm doing a bunch of different food, it'll just help me stay clean without having to run off to a sink. All right, we've got the Ranger going. At 425, I'll open it up and show you guys what's going on. This one is being powered by my Goal Zero Yeti battery pack, which is great for portability. I wanted to use that today to show y'all when we get back to tailgating, this is how I power my Traegers remotely. Goal Zeros 
allow me to not have any sort of power source. I don't have to run a lousy, noisy generator. Um, you, know, you probably can't see it there, but the goal zero back there, it's smaller than this, and it says it's got 30 hours left on it, and it's only been running an hour. So they're great for Traegers. We're gonna load this grill up with these shrimp. See how many I can fit on here. The question is, can the shrimp get overcooked by waiting on the bacon? That's the trick. You really gotta watch these because it certainly can. Um, we're gonna watch these and we'll, we'll kind of keep an eye on it and see when they look right. Pull them and hopefully be good to go and not overcook them. Say it louder. Oh yeah, so if you don't have a Ranger, um, I'm just showing, the, you certainly don't have to have a Ranger. You can use any grill for this. Um, one of the reasons we're using multiple grills is I need multiple temperatures today. And this just gives you an option. And, and we're known for tailgating, so this is good for me to show you this. Question was the fajita rub on the shrimp. Fajita is great. Fajita, salt, pepper, garlic, onion. It's what I use on obviously fajitas, all vegetables. It would be really good on shrimp. It's got a little more black pepper in it than the rub we used. Would the voodoo make the bacon too salty? Um, we can't fit all these, so we're going to save these for later. No, I don't think so. Um, I think voodoo is magical. So, anything. So here's the thing. Anytime you think a rub is too salty, this sounds cheesy, use less of it. Our fajita rub is often considered too salty. That's because people use too much of it, so just back it off. Voodoo bacon is amazing. All right, it's time to jump into ribs. Uh, you know what, I think what I'm gonna do is before we do ribs, I'm gonna check the temperature on these real quick. I think they're probably far enough to sauce them, I hope. So get my Thermapin. Woo, it's hot. Okay, just to show you guys, this wing is at 186 degrees. So there's no magic of TV there. That's the real deal. That's perfect. Beautiful color. You guys see that holy gospel on there? Um, 186, 187, this is great. So we can go ahead and sauce these, put them back on, and get into ribs. All right, little trick. I get asked this all the time. Get yourself a cotton string glove. You can get these at like Harbor Freight or wherever, Amazon, and then put a nitrile on top of it. That's how you handle hot meat. So I'll just have one of those on for now. So I can pick up this rack with that and it doesn't burn me. All right, this is my hot glove. Um, this is my non-hot glove. So let's talk about saucing these. This is the point where I mean, that wing is gorgeous. That, that's the benefit of cooking at 500 degrees right there. Get all that caramelization. Um, that wing looks epic, just like it is. And you could serve these just like this. You can have some dry rub wings um, just like this if you want. Now, again, third time I've said this, you could put any sauce in here you want and toss them up, put them back on the Traeger for maximum five minutes to let that sauce set. You're just letting it tack up. Because you can just sauce it, but if you just sauce it and you go to eat that wing, the sauce is going to run down your face. So I'm going back in the Traeger to tack it up for just a couple minutes. Um, actually, I'm going to, normally I'd throw it back in the 500 degree grill. I'm actually going to turn my grill down, which is going to take a few minutes. That way I can put my sauced ribs on there in a little bit. The grill is going to be plenty hot to tack these up. So I'm going to dial this down to 275. Almost there. You can do that from your app, which is my favorite thing. I love laying in my bed and controlling my trigger. Um, so again, you can do any number of sauces. So the, the recipe in the app or on, Meat Church, on the Traeger app or meatchurch.com will show you how to make 
the sweet Thai chili sauce um, from scratch. And so with time in mind, we've already prepared it in advance, so we're just gonna toss in this, but I wanna explain a key point to you. And I'm just gonna pour a little bit in here while we're talking. This sauce is great, by the way. Just a little bit of sauce. So by the way, go easy anytime you do something like this because you can always add more, but you can't take it away. Just toss them around. So I want a key point to my teaching. I mentioned in the beginning, that looks really good and wet. I'm gonna add just a little bit more. Key, key point. We can, we can work on, out, you know, we can be super chefy when we want to be. Meat Church won Best Bite at Chefs for Farmers in Dallas, which I think is Texas's premier food and wine festival. We can go in and be fancy. Barbecue's not fancy, and it doesn't have to be. So what I find when I teach, you don't have to make everything from scratch. You know, you're not out trying to win a competition. A lot of people might come to a recipe and say, dude, I don't want to make that. I don't want to go buy the eight things. I just want it to be easy. Cool. Go buy yourself a store-bought sweet Thai chili sauce. No shame in this. And you could just use this sauce and apply it. You go down the condiment aisle, get yourself a bottle of barbecue sauce, sweet Thai chili, you know, Frank's buffalo sauce. Take your wings and sauce them three different ways in three different bowls and have three different options for your guests. Awesome way to do it. Super flavorful. So now I can appease, again, all kinds of different flavor profiles. That's the way you can make super hot wings for the dudes that think they're tough and you can have the more savory, flavorful ones for somebody else and make everybody happy. All right, we're just going back in the Traeger for just a few minutes. Is someone new to smoking what? Yeah. The question is, for someone new to smoking, would this be an easy recipe? Absolutely. This is very easy. scratchers in there so think about it you season wings you cooked them for 20 minutes you toss them in sauce and you cooked them for three to five more minutes it doesn't get much easier yes go do this okay we're gonna jump into ribs hey we're doing pretty good on time too let me look at my shrimp before we pull the ribs out Woo! Suckers look good. I am going to flip those in a few minutes, so I'll pause the rib talk in a second to do that. But for now, let's jump into ribs. Shout out to Snake River Farms, who have provided um, some beautiful ribs for us today. And I'm going to pull a little uh, disposable cutting board out here so I can preserve my pretty board for the end. This is just a pretty popular disposable cutting board that we'll do prep on. Amazing for tailgating, um, amazing for deer camp. Time you want to go remote and not have to clean cutting boards, these are the way to go. So I love to use them for this. So I want you guys to look at these ribs. These suckers are marble. These are St. Louis cut ribs. Um, admittedly a pretty small rack, but just like amazing marbling on these ribs. They look super, super pretty. This is going to be the quickest rib lesson I've probably ever gone through uh, in my life. But the great thing is, again, go to the Traeger app. It'll walk you through step by step. Um, this is very, very easy. So I'm just going to give you the high points and some key things to, uh, to remember. Um, we're going to talk about these raw. I'm going to season them. I'm going to talk about what, what you look for in stage two of the cook, which is when we wrap them and put some goodness in the wrap. We're going to do that. Um, then I'm going to talk to you about the final stage of the cook, the third stage, which is saucing the ribs and kind of finishing things up. So again, this is a this is a St. Louis cut, so it's the whole spare rib cut down uh, to a St. Louis cut. Um, this rack, this actually one I picked out randomly, isn't that thick, so not real big, but they have gorgeous marbling. When I'm picking out ribs, and I'm looking in the case at the grocery store, I'm looking here for this little white fat. Um, to find the ones that have that marbling. It's like looking at a Wagyu steak. The more of that you have, the better it's gonna taste. Um, normally I'm looking for a really thick rack of ribs to get something nice and meaty. Um, this is my favorite type of rib to cook. If you compete in barbecue, this is what you cook, so you're kind of used to this. Um, the taste is superior to a baby back rib, in my opinion. Baby backs are usually more meaty. 
um, but it's the, the St. Louis or spare ribs are widely regarded to have a better taste. Snake River, amazing company, um, heritage breed hog, so it's, it's, it's great tasting. Um, the minute you have a heritage breed hog, um, it's tough to go back to a commodity brand pork rib, but using this recipe, you can make any ribs you buy at your grocery store taste amazing, um, to be honest with you. So we're gonna jump into it. Tell you what I'm gonna do, this way I, I can keep things kinda separate. I'll put my heat glove on and flip these shrimp can get some questions here from Kate, and then we'll go straight through these. What's the temperature you have the shrimp set up? Temperature is 425 on the shrimp. Woo, they look good, man. The bottom side looks real good. People want to know what I'm drinking? Huh. I'll show you later. More questions? Question is, am I a 3 2 one guy? I'll hold that for a minute because um, I'm not. We'll talk about that. We do a three step process, just not on those same hours. Okay, I'm trying to keep them in over the over the deflector plate here so that they're the drip plate, drip pan, um, so they don't get too burned from the fire. By the way, this thing's a beast. If you like to cook steak, that's a searing machine. Okay, I'm gonna use these same gloves for this. Any more questions? Okay, let's jump in. A rib cook for me is a three-step process. Um, the question a second ago was, am I three, two, one guy? What's three, two, one? 321 is cook the hours, cook the ribs for three hours unwrapped in the Traeger, wrap them up in foil for two hours, open them up and leave them out for an hour back on the grill. So three hours naked, two hours wrapped, an hour back open and sauced at some point. So my recipes to cook ribs at 275, um, six hours would be too long. They'd be overcooked, even for a big rack of ribs, much less these small ones. You can cook ribs, by the way, anywhere from 225 to even up to like 325. There's no real right or wrong way. Lower temperature, a little more smoke. Um, I don't think you need to cook at 325. I think you safely go 250 or 275. The higher you go, the more attention you have to pay to it. Hotter cooks can get away from you, but don't be afraid to cook hot. You can cook a brisket, pork butt, ribs, all at 325. You think I'm crazy. The best competition cooks in the world do it. You just gotta pay more attention to it. So. All my recipes are generally written, barbecue recipes are generally written at 275 because to me that's a good middle of the road. It's cooking it quick enough while not sacrificing quality. But like I said in the beginning, my way is not the gospel. It's not the only way. If you want to go lower, add more time to your recipe. If you want to go hotter, check it more often. It'll cook quicker. It's that simple. So we're going 275 today. Um, so let's pretend these aren't this small. On a normal rack of ribs I buy from the grocery store. At 275, my process is more like two to two and a half hours in the smoke, usually two and a half. Okay, step one, two and a half hours, not three. Step two is two hours in the smoke. So that's about four and a half-ish. And then I unwrap them and sauce them at the end for just 10 or 15 minutes. So I'm, you know, four and a half-ish hours is how long mine take normally. And that's tried and true for me. And I'm gonna talk to you about key points along the way Get those numbers out of your head. Forget how many hours. I want you guys focusing on what these look like. You can cook ribs with your eyes, not your watch. That's what it's about. Barbecue is about the feel and the look. It's not about electronics. It's okay to use electronic tools as safeguards. The essence of barbecue is about what I'm smelling right now, what I'm seeing right now, how it's looking, and that'll get you where you need to be. Just use this as your sanity check if you need it. Um, I don't use it really on ribs, and I'll talk to you about that. First things first, you're going to get yourself a dry paper towel, and you're going to pull the membrane off the back of the ribs. I've actually already done that from this rack because we're trying to teach you three things in an hour. Dry paper towel is the key. You can either grab the edge of it right here, or a lot of people grab the middle. I grab the edge. This keeps the membrane dry, and you hopefully peel it off in one pull. Why do I do that? Two reasons. I want the seasoning to penetrate the back of the ribs 
And also when I'm done cooking, I want, when I go to eat a rib, I don't want that, what I consider a nasty film underneath. That, that's a really bad bite. When you go to take a bite of ribs and you have that film underneath, I'm just gonna say this, you go to a barbecue joint and the membranes weren't pulled, that's a lazy barbecue joint owner that doesn't wanna pay somebody to pull the membranes. So pull the membranes. Uh, I skipped over this, but another thing I look for when I buy ribs is in the case, flip them over and look at the bones and try to find the straightest bones. That'll help you when you go to cut at the end. When you go to cut your ribs, can't always see the bones. Um, you can cut them a lot easier. If the bones hook when you're cutting, all of a sudden you're gonna cut into a bone. So look, look for as straight a ribs as you can get. If you ever go and see a guy picking through every rack of ribs, it's probably a competition guy trying to find the meat, most marbled, meaty, and straightest ribs. We're gonna start on the bone side. And we're going to season today with our honey hog hot. I know that I'm touching this with this hand. I'm going to get rid of this glove in a second. Um, it's pork. Honey hog hot on the bone side. I season pretty liberally. Believe it or not, it's hard to put too much of this stuff on here. And I'm going to pat it dry. I'm going to pat it dry. I'm going to pat it in because I don't have time on my side today. Skipped over one thing I just realized. Should you use a binder? And I brought some yellow mustard. We're in Texas, so we're using Whataburger mustard. If you don't know what Whataburger is, it's the best hamburger chain in the country. It basically makes in and out its lowly little brother, eight days a week. Mustard would be a binder if you want to use it. Squeeze this on raw and rub it in. That is just a way for the seasoning to adhere to the meat. It doesn't affect the flavor profile. Um, it's not necessary. But again, I grew up in the South where you slathered all your ribs and all of your pork butts. So you can do it, but if you've got 20 minutes, you don't necessarily need it. I go both ways with it. I like to season and walk away for 10 minutes, flip it over and repeat the process. In 10 minutes, these ribs will be soaking wet. But because we're in a hurry, I'm just gonna kind of encourage it. And I'm gonna flip these ribs over. Look at that little police line we left there. Learned that from my friend Kirk. Not even here to hear it. And then on the top, we're gonna go with one of our OG rubs, Honey Hog. Honey Hog is one of the two rubs I took on Barbecue Pitmasters in 2014, where we were told we had best taste. So Tuffy Stone, Myron Mixon, um, and Mo Kason all wanted some of this. So honey rubs are very popular in barbecue. This is our all purpose with honey powder added to it. It's great. I uh, told you earlier, kids love it. Well, I want maximum coverage on this. And for those of you that just watch me season and think I went a little crazy and I don't know what I'm doing, I love it when people say that on social media. I own a seasoning company. I think I'm pretty good at how much to put on here. But for my years in competition, this is what you do. Trust me, it's not gonna taste too salty or anything like that. I'm gonna pat it a couple times and I'm gonna set it aside while I talk about the cook and then I'll kind of reference this here in just a second. Let's check in on our shrimp. Tell me that is looking so good. Yes, I'm touching it. I'll save that one for me. All right, I'm gonna switch gloves one more time now that I've touched my shrimp. Be all right. Let's talk about cooking these. Any, any questions you have? Any? Okay. So I told you we're going 275. We're rolling pecan pellets today. Pecan and hickory are my favorite. Um, I also love, um, we're going to forget about these. Hang on. We're supposed to be five minutes on the sauce and we just about forgot. Look at those. Tell me those don't look sexy. I'm going to set these aside till we plate at the end. Do those smell epic. Okay. So, um, 275 with hickory pecan. I also recommend adding some cherry. Cherry gives a great flavor and a great color to pork, so that's another great option for you. Going to the visual cues. You're gonna put these in your Traeger, these ribs in your Traeger after they've adhered, and we're almost to a point where I can show you what I mean there. They're starting to get wet here. This whole thing will be wet within a couple minutes. Once you've achieved that, you're good to put them on. Um, 
You, by the way, you don't ever need to season ribs the night before. I love prepping the night before. Um, the best rib cooks in the world don't season the night before. They season within the hour of putting them on the grill. Um, the top rib cooks I know, they go one hour before the cook, 30 minute rub it here on one side, flip it over and 30 minutes on the other side, never anymore. So for what it's worth, there's a tip for you. But we're gonna put these in the Traeger at 275 degrees. And what I want you to do is be looking for nothing more than a visual cue. These are gonna start to turn reddish and they start to turn to a mahogany color. You're looking for that beautiful red mahogany color. And at that point, you wanna pull them and wrap them. And I'm gonna show you that because I've cooked a rack for two hours um, that I've prepared for you guys to show you the color that you're looking for. Let me hop down here into my warmer. I got a warmer down here off camera. Okay, so after two hours, let's. This is. Uh, I've just. I'm just holding these in foil. So these. These aren't technically something that was wrapped in foil quite yet. This is just. Uh, and this is all just the seasoning and. Um, ignore the foil. Like I said, I wrapped it in foil just to hold it. Actually, I'll put it on the edge of this whiteboard so you can see that. question is do I wrap to finish so that's jumping ahead just a little I will um, I'll cover that here in just a second so this is where this is what we did with these raw ribs this these cooked for two hours and that's the color I got this was right at um, if they were bigger it'd be two and a half hours since they're these are on the smaller side you see this color um, that's what you're looking for do you don't need to temp it you don't need to worry about how much time has it been when you get that beautiful color and by the way, they wouldn't look wet like this. They look wet like this because I wrapped them in foil to, before we started to hold them for you. They would be dry. Um, but that's the color that you're looking for. When you get to that color, it's time to wrap these ribs. And we'll go in next into talking about wrapping. I'm actually going to wrap them. So you're going to grab yourself two pieces of heavy-duty aluminum foil. So don't get the standard weight. Get the heavy-duty. Um, that's because the standard, you can rip a hole in it like fairly easily. So you wrap for two reasons. One, to protect that beautiful color. I wrap it, it won't take on any more smoke and it'll stay that bright red color. And the second reason is you can add things to the rib wrap should you choose to enhance the flavor. And that's something that a lot of competition guys do. You can choose to do this or not. Um, some people will just cook their ribs all the way through till they're, till they're done. Then they'll wrap them in foil just to hold them until you're ready to cut them and eat them. But doing what I'm about to show you is a really popular way to honestly have like just a super good, super good rib. I get a ton of feedback on this recipe off meatchurch.com. People are like, dude, those are the best ribs I've ever made. What is that comprised of? It's going to be super simple. We're going to put down a bed of just a little bit of, uh, of brown sugar like a handful. So I'm, I mean, this is just like a light handful. Not too much. So a lot of people do brown sugar, butter, and honey. I'm not doing honey today. And I'm gonna go ahead and tell you another tip. If you ever do this and then your ribs turn out really black and you email me and you're like, hey Matt, my ribs turned out hard as a rock. what I do wrong? Sugar and honey burn. If you put too much in it, if you cook it too hot, um, so just go light with it and check it often to make sure you don't burn it. So I went brown sugar and I'm adding four pats of a really good butter, like a European butter, not nothing cheap. Um, and then I'm going to add a bead of pepper jelly. So this is apple, cherry, habanero. This is actually two times heat. Um, this is optional. You don't have to get this. This is out of Houston. It's my buddy Craig Sherry. But apple, cherry, hob is a competition secret of mine from back in the day. I don't compete much anymore, but... I'm just gonna do a nice little bead. This stuff's great. Um, this would be the equivalent of you, this is like liquefied pepper jelly. If you bought yourself a jelly, like a jalapeno pepper jelly, you could put that in here. Um, you could heat that up in a saucepan and that's basically all I'm doing. And then I'm gonna lay these ribs, meat down in that goodness. I'm gonna wrap them up. My Traeger is coming down to 275. It's at 300, I'm gonna throw them in the Traeger. By the way, let's check back in on these ribs here. 
I mean, how long has it been? Seven or eight minutes, and it's almost completely adhered. You see how wet that is? So when it's completely wet, I'm ready to throw them on. So I'm going to remove that. Better check in on our shrimp. Whew. I'm going to pull some of those before we finish the ribs, so bear with me a quick second. Oh yeah, those are hot. A couple of those aren't done yet, so I'm just gonna start. Question? What's the hottest rub that you have? The hottest rub I have is Honey Hog Hot, and it cooks down to not be very hot, to be real honest with you. Um, and then the Holy Voodoo, it has a kick, but I don't consider it hot. favorite Traeger barbecue sauce we're going to use today, which is sweet and heat. So I'm always looking for a sweet heat flavor profile. That's my desired profile in barbecue. So that's my favorite. There's lots of good ones. Traeger Q is good, but that's my favorite. We're going to sauce in just a second with that. Let's just go on to talking about the um, um, rest of the rib cook uh, while we wait on those shrimp to finish. So we put we we take our wrapped ribs and we put those back in the Traeger. The next step is honestly very simple. Um, what you're going to do from there is you're probably going to go about two hours, like I said earlier. So I'm usually two and a half on the first step. Second step is about two. But you're going to need to open up that foil packet and you're again looking for another visual cue. You want the bones to be popping out on those ribs by about a quarter inch. When they do that, the ribs are telling you they're done. You can use an instant read thermometer if you want, but I actually don't care what the number says. I actually, I just want to feel in between the bones, I'm going to feel no resistance and I know they're done. If you're looking for a number, it's just over 200. Um, but I honestly, like I don't ever use my thermopin at home on ribs. I just look for the bones to pop out. And I've got a rack that's at that stage um, that I'm going to pull out and show you. Questions? Question was, can you use mayo as a binder on ribs? Um, if you guys follow my Thanksgiving videos, I put Duke's mayonnaise on a turkey breast. I don't actually put it on ribs. I've heard you can do it. Uh, mustard is very popular. I don't see mayo as much, but I'd try it. I mean, Coach Clark uh, put may and, uh, and Matt Chapman in Kansas City put mayo on a brisket this year and said it was great, so give it a shot. Let me know. I'm gonna grab these ribs. All right, so this rack was, you know, what I'm talking about four and a half hours in or so. And as they've sat in the warmer, you can tell they've continued to cook. That was a little risky. These probably are on the, oh, actually, these look super sexy. It's gonna say they might have been almost overcooked. Look at that. So here we go. You guys see this bone, po these bones poking out? Quarter inch. That tells me those ribs are done. And if you wanted to sanity check, go in the meatiest part in between. I don't feel any resistance right there. Um, it just goes right through. That's when I know these are done. So at this stage, we want to sauce them um, and put them on. Same thing like the wings. We're going to put them on for like five minutes. Forgot my sauce. So here's my sauce. What I've done today is I've taken the Traeger Sweet and Heat. This would be a great sauce by itself. But what I did was I added the same pepper jelly we used. I added some of the apple cherry habanero, just poured it in. And if you ask me for a recipe, it's to taste. So I'll usually go about three parts barbecue sauce to one part pepper jelly. What am I doing? I do this with a lot of sauces. It has nothing to do with, it doesn't knock like the Traeger sauce needs this, but I want an even more sweet heat. Those sauces are really going to give you that sizzle at the end. You're going to feel that in that bite. Um, I've heated this sauce up in a cast iron skillet. It's, it's nice and thin. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drizzle this sauce. And I, I'll do it right here, even though I'm going to use this board at the end, just to show you. I don't like to paint. Like, look, I don't want to do this. I don't like doing that because I don't want brush marks. This sauce is thin enough that I can drizzle it. 
and I'm going to put this back on the Traeger like this. I would normally do this in foil. The same foil I used, I would open it up and make it act like a little foil boat. Um, and that way it'll keep your grill nice and clean, but I wasn't thinking and I just threw my foil away. And I just like to let it drizzle on like that and run down. And we're gonna throw this back in the Traeger for you know five to 10 minutes and, uh, and just let it lock in. Same thing with the ribs. Now I know this sauce won't just run down my face. I want it to be nice and even. Look, you eat with your eyes first. You're hungry for these and you're not even here with me. So, you know, I want these to look perfect. Put them back on the Traeger for just a few minutes. And it's going to be time to eat in just a quick minute. Great question that I totally missed. Do I spray with apple juice? You can spritz. So I brought my spritzer. Everything's bigger in Texas. Don't get your little hair bottle, hairspray bottles and throw them away. Get yourself a real sprayer. This is a competition hog sprayer that we get at feed stores here in Texas. You can get them online. Um, I spritz with apple cider vinegar if I spritz. <clears throat> and I do this about every 45 minutes. This is a great spray gun. Check this out. I just get this like beautiful little mist. It's actually how I get the flip in my hair also. Um, I can dial this up, shoot all the way across the yard. Kids love it. Get yourself one of these. Every 45 minutes with cider vinegar. Totally skip that. Great question. I'm going to pull the rest of these shrimp while that, while that stuff's tacking up. Guys, fire away questions because we're going to be, we're gonna be uh, trying to pull this stuff all together here. Get ready to eat. How do you get to know a butcher? Oh, that's a good question. I would, um, I would certainly find one. You know, procuring really good meat is important. Um, you know, great barbecue starts with great ingredients, and I'd certainly want to know uh, my butcher, or no, I want to, I want to know my rancher if possible. That's not always, you know, real practical, but if you can know where your meat comes from, fantastic. I would definitely find a local butcher and um, buddy up with them, and that's how you get the best cuts. Man, those look good. Let's see here. Um, we've got other ribs coming. We're going to bring the wings out. You guys fire away the questions and let me start getting all this stuff together. What's your favorite dessert on the Traeger? What's my favorite dessert on the Traeger? I mean, that's a really good question. Um, I'm known to cook everything from cocktails all the way to desserts on the Traeger. Um, I have a chocolate pecan cobbler recipe on meatchurch.com that's pretty tough to beat. Really easy to put together. Very not healthy for you. Uh, of course, look, nothing I do here is healthy. I'm not here to help you lose weight. I'm here to help you enjoy your life and have amazing food. So try that recipe. What do you have on Jordans? Do I have on Jordans? That's actually a great question. Um, I don't. I actually have on a pair of retro Nikes today, um, kind of on a little retro Nike kick. So you guys know Jordans are my thing, but I'm afraid to wear them uh, in these classes because I can't get anything on them. Uh, the question was thin or thick cut bacon. So we went thin with these because the thick cut bacon would have taken too long um, to be cooked. Like this bacon's pretty good. This is great. This bacon's pretty crispy. The shrimp looks good. The shrimp would have been really overcooked. I'm going to shut my ranger down. Okay, I'm going to start bringing other stuff out. Feel free to fire away more questions. I'm going to grab the rest of my chicken wings. Charred hickory. I don't really know what that means. Have I, I don't know, the question was, have I used charred hickory? I don't really know what that question means. What kind of knives? I actually use a couple types of knife. I use Messermeisters, I use Shuns, I use, um, today we were using this um, Victor and X uh, boning knife. I'm actually using one of their chef knives. Um, I'm going to use a shun slicer here in a minute on ribs. A lot of good knives. Is it dangerous to eat the raw chicken uncovered in the refrigerator? 
is it dangerous to leave the raw chicken uncovered? Well, the danger is your wife's going to be pissed. Uh, take that from personal experience. Um, it's not dangerous. People do it all the time. They air dry out chicken. Um, make sure your kids don't grab it and try to do it without your wife looking. Any recommendations on jalapeno poppers? Heck yes. Jalapeno poppers we make all the time. Um, Meatchurch.com has a recipe for chorizo jalapeno poppers. There's also that same video on our YouTube channel. Um, really easy. I saute some chorizo, and that's optional. Soften a block of cream cheese is what you need to do. And then take a bunch of our honey hog rub, tablespoon, and put this in the cream cheese. Or our D's nuts honey pecan rub, put that in the cream cheese. Mix that up. Season the cream cheese. It's a game changer. Wrap it in a half slice or even a whole slice of standard cut bacon and a little more seasoning on top. Cook them at 275 for just over an hour. Amazing. These ribs been in five minutes. I'm pulling them. Look how pretty those look. Man, I'm gonna let those sit for just a second. We can talk a little garnishes. Again, you eat with your eyes first, so we wanna make this stuff look pretty. Um, I've got some uh, toasted sesame seeds here. Sweet Thai chili works great with that. Little pop, good taste, good look. Got some green onion. It's good for contrast. <clears throat> You're gonna take a picture of this, give your eyes a little rest with the green. You're welcome. Nod to the food stylist. Okay. We've got some pretty good dipping sauces tonight. We've got like a, a garlic butter sauce. I mean, dip it all in a butter. We got that to go with the shrimp here. Um, over here, we've got uh, we've got some Parmesan ranch that we're that we've got going here with these wings. If you want that, we've charred some lemons. We've got some more ribs out here. We're gonna bring in. I'm gonna show you guys how to slice these. Take your last questions. This rack, by the way, was pretty straight, uh, so these should be hopefully fairly easy to slice. A lot of people flip these over and slice on the bone side. Then you mess up your paint job you just put on here. And these are gorgeous. I certainly don't want to mess those up. Um, so I'm just going to do just a real simple slice here. What's your go-to cocktail when you're barbecuing at home? My go-to cocktail when I'm barbecuing at home. Uh, if you guys have watched these before, you've seen me make my smoked Old Fashioned. I love to take uh, TX whiskey or bourbon, primarily the bourbon. Uh, I know Old Fashions are usually made with a rye whiskey. And I put Traeger's smoked simple syrup in it, along with some bitters, uh, and it's really, really good. That's my favorite cocktail. Uh, we're in Texas, and so I'll show you my beer in a minute. I drink a Texas beer that you need a light beer in Texas because it's hot. Uh, we all love craft beer, but you need what we call a porch pounder in Texas because we usually barbecue when it's 105, and you can have about one IPA or one craft beer, and you're done. So I drink a lot of light beer. Um, I'm going to put some more ribs out here. Say that again? I, I got a little lost with that question. Three eight-bone slabs of beef ribs, roughly 30 pounds, eight hours at 250. Yeah, I usually cook beef ribs in eight hours, so that's probably good. Uh, you may need to wrap them kind of the last couple hours or so. Um, but you shouldn't need any more than eight hours. But if you start getting in trouble on a long cook, by the way, just tip for your cooking anything. Aluminum foil can be your friend in cooking barbecue. If you're running out of time, wrap it in foil and crank the heat. That's funny. I just like put two racks of ribs together. What's the best temperature for pork butt and seasoning do you suggest? Question is best for pork butt, favorite seasoning. Uh, 250, either our honey hog or our gospel rubs are really good. This is... Cutting boards, rosewood block. Um, we actually sell this one in my shop in Waxhatchee. Um, gorgeous epoxy inlay, uh, rosewoodblock.com to get something similar with your own logo on it. Um, great friends of ours, love them. God, this looks good and it smells amazing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it prepared for my Super Bowl party here. Shout out to Snake River Farms for the um, 
for all the fine meat here today uh, and for this little special thing. This is going to be pretty fun in a minute. And I'm going to make myself a little plate here. This is such an epic meal that I'm going to bring in the Mito Bandito box. This is this thing's legendary, by the way. This thing only comes out for the finest meals. I mean, this is like Raiders of the Lost Ark here. My cutting board has its own box. Oh yes, Mito Bandito, our mascot. Here, I make myself a little plate. Whew. I don't know where to go first. Those are too pretty to eat. I'm just gonna have to go with some of these. Get myself a couple ribs. Excited to see what you guys can create on Sunday. I'm gonna go with this one. There we go. Told you I'm a flapper guy, but I'm also equal opportunity. I'll get some, uh, get a little bit of everything here. Man. That looks good. Gotta go with those shrimp. Mmm. And I'm ready. I'm running out of room. My dipping sauces. Whew. Man, gotta get ready. It's time. I can't wait anymore. It's hot, and I don't care. Mm. I'm going to need a minute. Whew. All right, we nailed the shrimp. Sorry about talking my mouth full. That is good. Don't be scared of the jalapeno. Um, I didn't tell you this earlier, but if you take the membrane out of the jalapeno, they're not hot. Seeds aren't where the heat and the capsation is, it's the membrane. That just flavor, not hot at all. Let's get in on the wings. Sweet Thai chili. Mm. You can taste the rub, taste a lot more of the, the sauce on there. That's tough to beat. Everyone will love that. It's not too hot. Man. Now we're gonna try these Snake River Farms ribs. Oh yeah. You want a rib where you can leave teeth marks. That's perfectly cooked. Fall off the bones overcooked. If you like that, that's cool. But when you can take a bite and leave the bite marks, that's good. Ain't mad about it. That's the last question? Well, what's new for Meat Church in 2021? Well, we just dropped our chili seasoning in late November, and we just released it to our wholesale partners last week, so now that's more widely available for you guys. That was the big one. We've got one massive one in the works. Um, that we can't talk about quite yet because it's not quite ready to reveal yet, but we're pretty excited about it. It'll be a little bit closer to the summertime. Uh, we do have a huge spring collection release in March. We've got a ton of our popular cool merch coming out. Um, so that's kind of that's kind of the next thing. Hey, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me, putting up with my antics, listening to my hot air, giving me my, my uh, creative release for the last couple months. I haven't done this since November. Um, if you like this, uh, you can catch me again on May 27th. Um, May is National Barbecue Month, so that definitely will be a fun time. The next Traeger Kitchen Live is in two weeks. Um, these are always a good time, so be sure to tune back in two weeks. My buddy Clarence Joseph, also from Texas, is going to be on doing some comfort food. So we're going to shift gears and talk about what my favorite food is, comfort food. Um, you guys stick around or hop over to Instagram. If you had fun here tonight, want to ask more questions, Chad Ward, a.k.a. Whiskey Bent Barbecue. Chad is at the Dan Patrick Studio getting ready for the Super Bowl. Um, I think he passed his COVID test, and they're going to let him in the facility. Uh, so he and I are going to go Instagram live in about 10 to 15 minutes and kind of talk about what we did in BS, have a drink. That's always a good time. But want to thank you guys again for tuning in. Don't forget, 
Hashtag Traeger game day all day Sunday, but take my advice, do it early. Um, good luck, get yourself some prizes. Go check out the last two uh, YouTube videos on the Meat Church channel dropped this week. We'll give you a couple more um, appetizer recipes for Sunday uh, for your family. And again, thank you guys for spending time with me. Cheers, and see you guys in May.